Hey guys, this backyard ride review on the Channel Islands Nick Bet 2 has taken some time. Due to having ridden it in three different sets of dimensions and also in two different constructions over the past couple of years. Now everyone should have a good performance grobler step down in their quiver for better shaped smaller waves and dialing the correct dims for this type of board is not always an easy task. In this review I break down the steps I took in arriving at what was ultimately the dims that suited me best and cover both spine tech and flex bar constructions. For reference I'm 6'3 and 185 pounds. I won't go into huge detail about the design in this review, other than the famous chopped square tail keeps things fun out the back with both pivot and release on demand, and the generally flat rocker and wider outline coupled with a big single concave all combine to generate tons of speed for performance grovelling. More details can be found on the Channel Islands website. The first neckbed 2 I ordered as a custom spine tech at 511 by 19 3 quarters by 2 and 7 16 coming in at 31 litres of volume. This was essentially a lengthened and thinned out stock 510 which I attempted to use as more of a daily driver, however I soon found out that the outline and overall flatter rocker didn't really go that well in hollower conditions in the 3 to 4 foot head to overhead range. Overall it just felt a bit too loose, skatey and the rocker was a bit flat for the steeper sections. Because I had grown it in length, the outline had also grown and in fun bowly 2 to 3 foot shoulder to head high surf, it didn't feel like it quite fitted the tighter transitions in those smaller conditions. It was at this point I decided to try a stock 59 off the rack. The stock 59 by 19 and 5 8 by 2 and a half at 31.2 litres in spine tech went really good in fun 2 to 3 foot shoulder to head high surf and I could feel the drop back in length and width had given me more response than the custom 511. However, I did notice a slight lack of drive at times. I had only used the reactors at this point in both neck beds as these upright fins are very quick in transition and work really well when the wave is standing up and coming at you. But as soon as you need to get down the line or go through some flatter sections, they do lack a bit of drive and the drop down to 5.9 also exaggerated that. I could have of course tested with a more drivey fin with a larger base, but at this point I'd already got curious about trying the flex bar tech, and this would be a great opportunity to order a custom 510 which would naturally add more drive with the longer rail line. My flex bar custom dimensions are 510 by 19 and 5 8 by 2 and a half, coming in at 31.7 litres, and is basically a slightly lengthened stock 59. These dims were magic straight out of the gate, instantly providing me more drive than the 5.9, but also fitted into the tighter transitions perfectly in smaller shoulder to head high waves. The flex bar construction is just as good as the spine tech in terms of spring and projection, and feels a little more natural the way it sits in the water, more like a PU, where the slightly lighter spine tech sits a little more on top of the water. Whenever there is likely more texture on the wave face, I'll be reaching for the flex bar due to its slightly heavier weight. However, in saying that, they are both lightweight, super springy epoxy constructions, and you can't go wrong with either really. Channel Islands Flex Bar are made under license by Paul Barron out of Mount Monganui here in New Zealand. I've tested with the reactors in large, AM2s, and Philippe Toledo's in large. The reactors are great for exaggerating those quick turns in the bowl, but as I said before, felt a little less drivey at times, especially in flatter or down the line sections. The AM2s were the driviest of the three, but felt the least responsive in smaller size pockets. I've ultimately landed on the Philippe Toledo and Large, which were the best of both worlds, as they are a super quick responding fin, but with larger base and extra rake that give more drive and projection through sections that demand this. Let's have a look at some waves and pick up on how it's performing. You can really see how fast and whippy this thing is in smaller waves with tighter transitions. I can visibly see how fast it is through turns in the footage, especially when you get a nice pocket to carve or hit. It always seems to be accelerating towards the lip or over it. In summary, the Neckbed 2 is a highly focused performance groveler for boldly surf in the 1 to 4 foot waist to overhead range that can be used as a daily driver of sorts. Although I'd recommend something like an OG Flyer or Happy Every Day as a more capable daily driver covering a wider range of conditions. The 
and Eggbed 2 is lightning quick through tight transitions and the fastest point to point board I've ever ridden. The custom 510 flex bar was right on the money for me in terms of dimensions and the flex bar construction is the best of both worlds being a performance epoxy with the feel of a PU. Thanks for watching guys and if you like the review don't forget to subscribe, ring the notification bell and give us a like. Cheers!